coming up with well thought out means of addressing the intellectual and economic capital that will be required to address this issue. One of the leading experts and author of the standard work on black gold is Daniel Jurgen. Oil, he believes, is first and foremost an intrinsic element of national power, the ownership of which gives rise to conflicts and wars. The answer is to diversify uh, the sources of production uh, so that uh, there will be crises, there will be problems. We've seen it over the last few years how problems in Nigeria or in Russia or in Venezuela can affect the world oil market and the answer the only answer that we've really found to deal with that political uh, risk, and that's whether you're a company or whether you're the world community, is through diversified resources. Don't be too dependent on one part of the world. We need to recognize that the primary resources of, of this world lie outside of the United States and even North America. Uh, that many of these countries that we will rely on our energy needs are in very politically uh, economically and socially uh, 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 risky areas, looking at Africa, Middle East. 60% of the world's oil reserves lie in the Middle East, the second biggest portion of that in Iraq. Among the first objectives for American forces in the last Gulf War were Iraq's oil fields. But the calculation that access could be secured didn't work out. I think one of the bitter ironies about George W. Bush's uh, decision to invade Iraq, um, despite the many thousands of deaths and so on, is that uh, it ha really hasn't given the U.S. any more control over that oil, uh, but it has increased the U.S. military presence in the Persian Gulf, and now uh, the U.S. has no choice but to stay in the Persian Gulf for the foreseeable future. Even with the war over, hardly a week goes by in Iraq without attacks on drilling installations and pipelines. U.S. military presence can't prevent them. A situation which is not without repercussions. The Gulf War has left the oil market more nervous and the price more volatile than before, and has pushed up America's oil consumption. I just found uh, numbers from the Pentagon that indicate that they're now consuming, the, the 140,000 troops in Iraq are consuming about 1.9 million gallons of fuel per day, and all of it has to be imported into Iraq. Um, and so, you know, from a strategic standpoint for the U.S. military, it's a terrible situation. Houston is dependent on the drug oil. Without it, the refineries on the outskirts of the city would close down in the second largest petrochemical complex in the world. The question of Washington's strategies for securing adequate oil imports in the future is nowhere of more interest than here. And we have to talk about Vice President Dick Cheney because in this area, I think it's Dick Cheney who's the principal strategist in the administration. And I think he understands very well that increased U.S. dependence on imported oil will put the United States at greater risk, both of terrorism or involvement in local conflicts, and therefore we have to have a bigger, more powerful capacity for what they call power projection, for intervention in the developing world. And this has been the hallmark of the Bush-Cheney military policy from the very beginning. Dick Cheney became U.S. Vice President straight from the executive floor of the world's biggest service provider for oil companies and the armed forces, Halliburton. In his new office, he presented George W. Bush with a paper laying down the guidelines for America's energy policy in the decades ahead. They project a 50% increase in U.S. oil consumption over the next 25 years. And that really is a very tough requirement to fill. It will mean a substantial increase in U.S. imports of oil from foreign countries. So procuring all of this additional imported oil is one of the primary concerns of the Bush-Cheney Energy Report. In fact, one-third 35 out of 105 recommendations in the Cheney report are specifically about 
increasing America's access to imported petroleum. The key message. The report recommends that the president make energy security a priority of our trade and foreign policy. Well, the Bush administration does not have a strategy other than uh, invade the oil producing countries and militarize the oil producing uh, regions and the, and the oil choke points. Uh, that has been the thrust of all of Bush's uh, policy so far. And you see it now in the Strait of Hormuz, you see it in the Strait of Malacca, uh, you see it uh, in, in, uh, in Panama, in the Suez. The U.S. now is uh, the military's sole goal around the world has become to militarize the choke points and to militarize the oil producing countries that are friendly to the US and I think that that trend is clearly going to continue the report also sets its sights on a new oil region along with Latin America West Africa is expected to be one of the fastest growing sources of oil and gas for the American market I think if people took the trouble to read this report, and unfortunately not enough people have read the report uh, to its conclusion, but if you did read it, you would see that it does serve as a blueprint for American foreign policy. It says that the duty of the president and the vice president and the secretary of state and energy and commerce must be to increase their diplomacy in oil producing countries to work with foreign governments to overcome barriers to greater investment by the united states to bring in american companies with new technology to increase the output of oil and on this basis the secretary of state colin powell has made several trips to africa for example to meet with the heads of state of the oil producing countries to persuade them to increase their oil output to work more closely with the United States. The president has also in, become involved in this diplomacy. So it's very clear that the Cheney report did serve as a blueprint for American foreign policy. And for the foreign visits of the president, George W. Bush on a voyage of discovery. The destination, Africa a previously largely neglected territory. The schedule included a photo opportunity with AIDS orphans in Uganda. An opportunity too for the visitor to declare that his chief concern was to help Africa in the struggle against disease and poverty. The tour had nothing to do with oil. That was a ridiculous conspiracy theory. Bush had told reporters in Washington before setting off. And Condoleezza Rice added... It is uh, the, uh, the motherland, a um, uh, uh, source of cultural pride for a substantial part of America's population, and the president cares about that. The United States believes in the great potential of Africa. The greatest potential the Niger Delta in southern Nigeria. The country is fifth in the list of oil exporters to the USA. There was no question of it being missed out of the African tour of the American president. And George W. Bush